family's property near Buenos Aires. A good horseman doesn't necessarily make a good pato player. For this, the rider must become used to the speed and violent contact needed in this sport. Luis practices with his friends Nacho and Billy every day. Picking up, shooting, charging, and most important, the offering gesture, which if not done correctly, is penalized. It's through intensive training that the players perfect their style and dexterity. It's also at this time the other protagonists, the horses, are trained. The qualities a pato horse must possess are many. The desire to obey its rider, speed, and enough resistance to endure treatment that is sometimes brutal during the seven and a half minute periods. These beasts are very well cared for. Due to the extreme playing conditions, each horse rarely plays more than one of the six periods which make up a match. Each player must have many horses at their disposition. A long, flat saddle covered with sheepskin facilitates the rider's movements and is the essential equipment needed to play pato. Neither a girth nor any other object used to attach man to beast is allowed. Pato is a team sport. Luis Neforge captains the San Patricio team, the highest rated team in Argentina. The San Patricio team practices once a week at his ranch's pato field. There are 150 teams that participate in different regional and national tournaments organized by the Argentinian Pato Federation. One of the most important is the Argentine Open, played in Buenos Aires in front of 15,000 spectators. Luis and his team have sworn to win. the Pampas, land of marvels and strange legends. If Pato's a sport that tempts you, you can count on these real-life centaurs who've given themselves to this team sport, where man's strength, speed, beauty, and dexterity on horseback revolves around the offering. You can count on these gauchos, ghosts from the past, who infinitely cross the plains at dusk to present